Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, this okay. This one's just kind of sad. So, anyway, the chatter has increased. Chatter is in Intel terms, you know, when you're monitoring, you know, enemy transmissions, and there's there's amount of you know just transmissions going out there, and and uh, chatter might be like certain keywords, and there's a lot more chatter from um, SJWs after kind of not exactly laying low, but almost kind of like a truce year of 2019. 2017 was crazy. 2018 was completely insane. 2019 kind of calmed down. Um, and I attribute to that many things. Honestly, I think the lawsuit against Mark Wade was one of them. People were like, hey, let's just chill for a while because we don't want to get sued either. Um, uh, and But um, now things have really stepped up. I mean, they've uh, they really hammered at Sean Gordon Murphy until he had to, you know, go into defensive defensive positions, defensive maneuvers, evasive maneuvers, um, and uh, just really stepping it up. I noticed, like, for some reason, people send me screenshots, like, Heather Antos is mentioning the milkshake incident, like, really frequently now. It's like, that was, like, three years ago. Why is, after kind of, like, ignoring stuff like that and not really, you know, hammering at people that hard in 2019, why is 2020 different? And I think it's two things. I think the deal leaving... And I'm sensing that Jim Lee is is soft, a soft target, and will be willing to bend to their pressures. Um, but also, I just think th- they they've seen the sales for 2019. They've seen them down in 2020, and they are they are even realizing that things are winding down, and they're getting very very angry because they see this YouTube and Indiegogo and Kickstarter, and they realize they don't have it to cross over. And it's getting them really angry and they just want to kind of like break more things while they still have some bit of power. Um, And it's tragic when those people are talented. Some of those people were hired just for skin color, gender, sexuality, politics, and and no tears will fall for them. Um, But some people are actually talented. It's really tragic what they've done to themselves. And John Lehman is probably the top example. Ten years ago, he was he was the captain of the high school football team, and they went to state, and he won the big game. He had this book called Chew. It was from an out-of-nowhere, complete, huge success, probably second only to The Walking Dead at Image. Uh, it had 60 issues. It had spin-offs, specials, uh, multiple Eisner and Harvey Awards. And then it kind of, you know, got less and less popular and then it ended. And then I think he had like a Detective Comics run after that. Uh, The problem was, and this is early days, he was one of those people who was just awful to customers on social media. Just petty and vindictive and just mean. Just a mean, bitter a-hole, effectively. Um, And very proudly so, whenever someone would... uh, would uh, point that out, he would, he would say, yeah, yeah, I am. What are you going to do about it? Uh, I think he got a little bit cocky from those, those large paychecks from the early days. And as they kind of drifted off, he just kind of seemed confused. He would do weird things like issue proclamations that, you know, uh, he, he's basically like, uh, I'm looking for artists and I need to know your politics. Like he would literally ask for their politics to make sure they weren't quote garbage people or whatever. Um, predictably, this led to very poor sales and less and less and less work. Uh, the only thing he's really had out there is Outer Darkness, uh, which we, it's a weird one. So when it first came out, they're like, John Lehman, I was like, oh, geez, that guy. And somebody sent me like two of the review PDFs. I really couldn't finish them, but the guy was like, hey, this stuff's pretty solid. It's pretty good. And I actually consistently heard that from people, the, you know, from the few people who read it, they're like, it's solid. It's not bad. It's not really SJW. Um, but uh, John Lehman has just salted the earth of his own farm. Video title? I'm not sure salting the earth is like like a common phrase that everyone understands. So, um, no, yeah, I'll do it. Why not? Yeah, I was just going to write, it was going to say, uh, Outer Darkness 2 Number 1, Glory Days, Well, they'll pass you by. <laughs> That's basically what it is. It's, it's uh, the Glory Days song. So what he's doing, and honestly, it's kind of sad is like he's like because everyone's just sleeping on outer darkness i'm not saying it's like this awesome thing but i've heard it's solid 
from what I've seen of the franchise from this, it looks like a complete generic bore. Um, it's just like, hey, have you seen the Star Trek? And then the, it's the Star Trek, but it's a little different, but it's Star Trek. Hey, what if we said things that were different? Hey, there's a cook, but he doesn't look like a regular cook. And here's our, here's a special treat. Cartesian Motonin Moon Pie baked with slow roasted guitar and fan berries plucked from the ice. Yeah, I, I know there is a micro percentage of blue haired land whales who really love this style of sci-fi geek humor, but eventually it just comes down to, okay, we get it. This is kind of like Deep Space Nine, Star Trek, and okay. So then we're gonna get Chew because Al Bundy. He's Al Bundy. Hey, remember when I won the big game in high school? It's like, yeah, dude, I do remember that. It was 10 years ago. I remember you just being a straight-up a-hole, like a really, and not just abrasive, but like proudly abrasive. People would point it out to him, they're like, dude, you realize you're being really abrasive and rude? He's like, yeah, that's right. I've got fangs. He said, he literally said something like that one time. And, you know, obsessed, you know, hates Trump, blah, 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 who cares? Uh, so then we get introduced to Chew, and it's basically like, this is Tony Chu. He chews things. And then he knows the memories of the food. And then they, it's like literally just the character is just walking down the street and then they get teleported to the future. Okay? And then they're like, we need you because you can chew food and know things. Nobody, nobody in the future has that power? Nobody. Nobody. And this spaceship just has the power to just grab people. It's a very powerful spaceship. Especially since you were dealing with just like a minor diplomatic problem you would find in any episode of any you you have the you have the you can just beam people from history you can find anyone you need from any maybe we should do a whole mini series about that so then i had assumed like this is just a really wonky weird it's like you have your you're gonna mix chew with outer darkness and one but yeah just combining the two it's i mean it's sad it's just like hey remember me and he got you got Rob Guillory. Rob Guillory is doing fantastically. He's got that book Farmhand. It's um, uh, it's it's doing strong. It's like at issue 14, and it's still got strong indie sales. Rob Guillory is great with the customers, and honestly, he doesn't need John Lehman at all. John Lehman needs him. He doesn't need John Lehman. I mean, when you got the tools, you got the talent, you got the the art skills, you're good with people. And he can write, and he writes like, you know, kind of like this heartfelt stuff that's going to be more, you know, meaningful. Like I said, just, just pure comedy, it just becomes like, okay. I mean, it, the comedy's not even that funny. Hey, they're, they're Mounties and it's the syrup. To, uh, yeah. Even some of these jokes, like, these jokes are like trash. Like, they get to the future and they're like... And we're conscripting you for a diplomatic for assistance in a diplomatic mission of extreme sensitivity. And he goes, like Starfleet, right? And if you're a first officer, that makes you what? Riker or Spock? I'm sorry, but now I have no idea what you are talking about. May the force be with you. Hi, ha, ha, that's a thing, and I know what a thing is. That's that. What? That's not even a joke, dude. That's like a placeholder joke. I do this all the time with dialogue when I'm writing the, the, the plot. I'll just put like some placeholder dialogue, just like, so you just put like the most trash, like, ah, geekcuber.exe, like, oh. So that's it, it's like the most generic thing. Then they're like, some people just generically don't like each other. Oh, I don't like her, I'm the bossy female character. Oh, that, I, well, I wonder what I'll do. And then, this is so sad. To be continued. The idea that there is any existing audience for an Outer Darkness Chew crossover. I heard about this months ago and I always assumed it was a one shot because it was so pathetically sad. I was like, okay, so uh, can we get it? He said, like, oh God, this, no, stop. This is embarrassing. You're going to get a whole, what? Oh, jeez. So then at the end, it's basically, he does this whole thing. It's like, hey, remember Chew? We have books that you can buy. Somebody's friendly all of a sudden. Somebody isn't trying to do, uh, why do you, why aren't you not doing your political purity test here there? Obviously you need the money. 
Um, but what I'm saying is, is there's going to be a transition, and guys like Rob Guillory are going to do great. They're always going to do great. Uh, and creators like John Lehman are in real trouble, real trouble, um, because it's going to be a lot more personality and customer service based. And I, like I said, I think that's one of the reasons the chatter has increased because these people who their careers were based on knowing the right person, having the right politics, you know, that's all kind of gone. Now you just have to talk to the customers and nobody cares that you used to be on the Warren Ellis forums with this other person 15 years ago. And now all those, I've heard that's like, we're all like the powerful writers. They were all like the regulars from the Warren Ellis boards from like 15 years ago. Nobody cares who you're married to or that you know from the Warren Ellis boards. Nobody, no, good luck trying to um, uh, be like, uh, hey, bigots, I'm a black trans wheelchair. Buy my book on Indiegogo or you're Nazis. Everyone just be like, no. We don't go away. Oh, really? You got a Hollywood deal? Cool. Enjoy $35,000 slowly eked out over to you over the next three years. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, Indiegogo, and the Patreon. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. And I will have more new and old comic reviews up all this weekend. Thanks. Bye.